With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Friday, May 6, 2016. Flint residents now have five new locations to pick up bottled water, filters, replacement cartridges, and home testing kits. Amanda Emery of the Flint Journal reports that, effective immediately, the Genesee County Land Bank on Pearson Road in Flint's First Ward, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church on Stewart Avenue in the Third Ward, and West Court Street Church of God on West Court in the 6th Ward will be available for Flint residents to pick up water supplies. Also included are the Dort Federal Credit Union Event Center on Lapeer Road next to I-69 and the Genesee County Land Bank at the East Town Bowling Alley on South Dort. The Flint Fire Stations, as of this coming Monday, will no longer be available for water supplies, with the exception of Fire Station 3 on MLK. Michigan lawmakers could vote on a bill that would use scientific studies to determine the so-called magic number of how high is too high to drive. Brad Devereaux on MLive.com reports that a bill sponsored by State Representative Peter Lacido of Shelby Township would create a commission to find an appropriate threshold of THC in the blood to be recognized as too impaired to operate a motor vehicle. Currently, in states where such a policy exists, a level of 5 nanograms of active THC per milliliter of blood is used to determine impaired driving. Lucido says that this number was arbitrarily set, and a true study into the issue is necessary, adding that if the state of Michigan does not get it correct, then what's the point? The bill would employ the efforts of forensic toxicologists, physicians, and research scientists, among others, to find an exact saturation similar to the legal limit of .08 blood alcohol level. The proposed study comes on the heels of Michigan Senator Tom Casperson's bill, which passed the Senate in January, that would create a pilot program in five Michigan counties for roadside testing for marijuana, heroin, cocaine, and other drugs. Opponents of the bill say that no amount is safe, while proponents of the bill say that after even medical use of the plant, lingering effects would show a positive test result long after use. Lucido empathizes with medical marijuana users and says that people should be allowed to use appropriate treatments if necessary and should not have to ostensibly surrender their licenses. The Democratic Party is expected to vote on the elimination of autonomous superdelegates. RT.com reports that Maine State Representative Diane Russell introduced a rule change that would require superdelegates in Maine to be assigned proportionally based on the state's caucus results, just like normal delegates. The current internal Democratic rules say that so-called superdelegates, made up of party insiders, are allowed to vote however they wish, having the ability to ostensibly defy the will of regular party members by choosing purely for who they personally wish. Party leaders say that primary voting is not governed by the laws of normal elections, and Russell says that any approved amendment would not come until 2020. Warfarin A popular drug treatment for atrial fibrillation, among other uses, may be linked to dementia. The U.S. News reports that based on a study led by Dr. Jared Bunch, cardiologist at Intermountain Medical Center in Murray, Utah, the drug may contribute to dementia if the doses are not optimal. The study noted that erratic levels of warfarin in patients could be linked with increased risk of dementia, while also noting that the study allegedly does not prove anything one way or the other, and that it is plausible that either atrial fibrillation itself or erratic warfarin levels could contribute to the brain disorder. Gordon Tomaselli, chief of cardiology at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, emphasized the importance of healthy lifestyle in preventing such conditions, adding that what is good for the heart is good for the brain. A lawsuit challenging Facebook's facial recognition system cleared a crucial early hurdle. TheVerge.com reports that the lawsuit alleges that Facebook's photo tagging system violates a user's privacy by creating face prints, geometric representations of a person's face, without explicit consent. The plaintiff points to the Illinois Biometric Information Privacy Act that requires anyone collecting such information as biometric data to notify users in advance and are required to say what is being collected, why that information is being collected, and for how long the information is to be retained. Facebook defends their claim, saying that the photo tagging system is disclosed in the company's 8,700-word data policy, noting that users have the option of opting out of the facial recognition system. The California judge hearing the case threw out a motion to dismiss by Facebook, saying that the terms of service do not override state law. And finally, a recent study finds that Reddit users have effectively proven Godwin's Law. CNN reports that Godwin's Law, an old internet adage, states that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches one.
And an analysis of 4.6 million publicly available comments on the popular Internet forum site found that of subforums with more than 1,000 comments, mentions of Nazi Germany or Hitler appear 78% of the time. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.